Um, and I'm say, guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Sunday morning here in Denver, Colorado. It's 8 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. We're jumping on for our daily dose of divine light, divine love, divine power, and we're going to be focusing on the light aspect for today. And this, we covered a little bit of this in a previous stream last week. Adriana, uh, my namaste. And um, it, begs to, it begs to go back into it um, because a couple of you actually privately messaged me about this particular topic. Karen, uh, my namaste. And we're curious to cover it more. So I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's hit it a little bit harder. <clears throat> so we're pulling from the Jessica Abba Namaste with her new profile picture. Now it's a, uh, na- good morning. Now it's a, um, your profile picture is like, it's not an esoteric image, so it's actually your face. Much easier to understand. Um, which actually reminds me of facial recognition. I remember reading body language and reading about faces and reading about hands when I was studying. This is maybe 20 years ago. And, and what your face tells you about another person. Tina, namaste, welcome. So we're pulling from Compassionate Objectivity, which is the book on the virtues, the five virtues that we work on in pranic healing, which is applicable to every single human being on the planet, regardless of what your belief system is, what your religions are, all of that stuff. So this one I really, really like. <clears throat> this is the very reason that I have not been a big fan of the education system since I was a teeny tiny nugget. Develop a mind that really thinks, not a mind that parrots. Shresh, have a namaste. Develop a mind that thinks, not a mind that parrots. So with our educational system as it is today and has been since the mid 1800s, it's basically been designed to create employees not to create people who are critical thinkers, not to create people who can solve problems, not to create people who can think independently of the collective. So there's something in the, in the world of metaphysics and esoteric teachings called an egregor. An egregor is a collective thought form. So every field of study and, and multitude areas of life have egregors. It's basically the jargon it's the energy, the thoughts, the feelings, the actions that that, that that area of life is connected to. So for instance, if you're part of the medical community, you begin to think, speak, and act like somebody within the medical community, right? If you're a mechanic, you begin to think, speak, and act like people who are in the mechanic world. And so we have a tendency to fall into that collective thinking. Andrew, Abba Namaste. Joanna, Abba Namaste. We have a tendency to fall into that collective thinking, which makes it very, very difficult for us to transcend, to go beyond, and to think maybe more rationally, right? So it's called herd mentality, mob mentality. A perfect, perfect, perfect example of this that most anybody of, I know anyone listening to this stream, but almost anyone in the world can relate to is with the coronavirus, what, what was their big, big run on in the coronavirus when they were talking about, you know, um, we're going to have to have lockdown and all of these things. The biggest run was on toilet paper. It wasn't on beans. It wasn't on rice. It wasn't on food that would sustain your life. It wasn't on supplements that you could consume and keep your body healthy and strong. It was based on toilet paper which was a false understanding, but because of herd mentality and people's inability to be still, be aware, and to think clearly, they went out and did a run on toilet paper, which even at the time I was like, is there something I'm not seeing? So rather than me just reacting, I'm asking the question, is there something I'm not seeing about toilet paper? Why is everyone making a run on toilet paper? What is it about toilet paper? Because you can use your hands, you can use, any multitude of things in a replacement of toilet paper when you're in a bind, no pun intended, right? So why toilet paper? Because it was a collective thought form that scattered throughout the world that there was one guy in Australia who bought 4,600 rolls of toilet paper, 4,600 rolls of toilet paper, then he went on to Amazon and to eBay to sell the toilet paper at 100% markup. 
So he bought 4,600 rolls of toilet paper, had the plan of marking it up 100% to sell it on eBay and Amazon. And then when it didn't work because Amazon and eBay closed both of his accounts, he was like, well, I have 4,600 rolls of toilet paper that would last me multiple lifetimes. What am I going to do with it? Rosalind, I'm a namaste. So guess what he did with it? He went to uh, he went back to the grocery store that he bought the 4,600 rolls of toilet paper from, and the general manager of the of uh, the grocery store, and this was a, a story done out of um, Australia, gave him the finger and said, "We're not refunding your money." Period, <laughs> and that was it. That was it because he was, for lack of a better way of saying it, I'm not saying this is a morally or ethically good thing that he did, but I'm saying he had the foresight to go, it's ridiculous that people need this much toilet paper, that that there's this run on toilet paper, that people are practicing the herd mentality, so guess what? He kept his cool, quote unquote, bought up all the toilet paper, and then he tried to make a profit uh, by selling it online to people that were, had this level of scarcity and fear around toilet paper, right? So he was activating, interestingly enough, the light aspect Within himself, he was thinking and he was not parroting, but because he lacked the virtue of loving kindness and not injury and generosity and non stealing, guess what? Right? He's, he's suffering financially because of it, because he's taking advantage of people. There's an old saying that when there's blood in the streets, make money. When there's blood in the streets, buy. When there's, when there's, chaos, and, there's chaos and drama and all of these things, that's when people are not thinking clearly. So the people who are still, who are aware and are rational can think clearly and can take advantage of those opportunities, right? Does that make sense? So this is uh, our discussion about the light aspect today. And again, I'll read the, the quote to you. Develop a mind that really thinks, not a mind that parrots. And I really learned this from Grandmaster Choa, one-on-one with him, as well as watching videos of him over the years, is that how he developed pranic healing or hatha yoga and the higher teachings that he's taught to the world, it was extremely difficult to develop those mental frameworks of here's his hypothesis, then experimenting over and over and over again and tweaking and refining the protocols over and over and over again. And then whenever there was new data that came in, that new data could potentially change the entire framework of where he started originally. So that means he's having to rebuild the entire framework of what his theory was on healing. And that's not easy to do. And he did that multiple, multiple times over about a 25 year period. So to really think is actually super, super difficult. Dean, I'm a namaste. So so our society teaches us to regurgitate. It doesn't teach us to think critically. It doesn't think us, it doesn't teach us to how to analyze. Actually, some of you may know a couple weeks ago, I bought a book on um, it's called What's Your Problem? And it's the process of how, does, how do you solve a problem from A to Z. And it's fascinating because you, you wouldn't think it's so difficult and challenging to solve a problem, but it is. It takes a lot of mental effort to actually solve a problem instead of basing it on um, assumptions, basing it on um, previous paradigms that other people have built that maybe aren't very effective or aren't valid to your particular problem, it's difficult to solve problems. So that's why people have a tendency to what? Stay stuck with the same problem for two years, five years, 10 years, if not their entire lives, because they have not developed the, um, the mental sharpness to solve the problem. The light aspect within them is not developed enough. So they just regurgitate. And that was always the problem I had in the schooling system. That's why I dropped out of school as a freshman in high school couldn't take it anymore. I was always a good student, partially a straight A student with barely any studying. And I was bored to tears. I tried to get into a private school and my father didn't have the will and I didn't have the will. And so it didn't happen. Um, I was in accelerated learning programs within the school that I was in, but I was still bored. It just wasn't my thing. So it's interesting that our education system, Samantha, I'm a namaste, is all about regurgitating facts and figures, regurgitating facts and figures, regurgitating facts and figures. It's never about, here's a problem, how do we solve it? 
one of the schools that I was looking to go to for entrepreneurship, was, which was number one in the country, is called Babson College in Massachusetts. And I really, really wanted to go to that school, but something within me, it never materialized, and I don't know why. I could have got in there through my grades, I could have got in there through financial aid, but something about it, I couldn't get in, I, I don't know what the block was, even now, many, many years later. But what I most appreciated about Babson College is that the very first semester, because it's, a, it's an entrepreneurial school, it's a business school on how to what? Start a business, run a business, make profit, sell it for a profit, right? Adding value into the world through a product or service. And your very, very first semester as a freshman is starting a business, running a business, and all the profits you make with that business for that semester, you give to a charity of your choice. So it's like you're problem solving, you're figuring out how to do something from the ground up, you're using critical thinking, and then you're practicing generosity by giving all of your profits to a nonprofit charity of your choice. Super, super smart. The Actually, the founder of Home Depot is an alumni, alumni from that school, right? So that's what I want to jump on with you guys and share that with you is that so many of us, myself included in areas of my life, so many of us don't practice actual thinking. All we do is we repeat back what we saw in a blog post, we saw in a video, we glanced in a book, and we just recite back what we're, what we're pulling in. So the difference between parroting back something and understanding that thing is throat chakra and ajna chakra. Throat chakra absorbs information, right? Ajna understands. Throat absorbs information, ajna understands. Most people do not function from the ajna chakra, they function from the throat, right? They function from here, not from here. This, this is the world of the intelligentsia. The people who quote unquote rule this world and control this world are the people who function from here. So my encouragement to each and every one of you is build up this ability over time through your spiritual practice and through thinking. One of the greatest forms of yoga that helps with that is called jnana yoga, J-N-A-N-A, jnana yoga, helps with your ability to think. And then there are practices even beyond that. But this is a great, 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 great place to start, okay? So I hope that helps. Uh, we ran over a little bit. Um, in the next 20 minutes, we're gonna be doing our Twin Hearts meditation, our quick one that we do each and every day. Um, and then we're gonna be doing our Twin Hearts meditation again at 10 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time, which includes a baby lecture, our physical exercises, our breathing, our meditation, and then a healing at the end. So for those of you who just can't get enough of spiritual growth and evolution, we're gonna be offering uh, both of those today because we have different groups of people that are attracted to different things. Um, and the one that's been going on at 10 o'clock has been going on for almost two years. So it just attracts a certain kind of people uh, on. Jhana Yoga, one of my favorite practices. Ah, yes. Yeah, Jhana Yoga. In Master Chol Koksui says, Jhana Yoga is one of the most difficult forms of yoga to practice because it requires many, many other things to be in place before you can become proficient at jnana yoga. And you, <laughs> thanks Dean, I appreciate that. You rock too, man. The ajna, cha, the, the one cannot practice jnana yoga until their emotions are calm. Most people don't have calm emotions and most people don't have clear mental bodies. So you have to have calm emotions and a clear mental body to just start practicing jnana yoga. Not that I'm discouraging anyone from doing it because we're all at different stages of development and growth and we all have different purposes that we want to accomplish in our life. But your ability to think clearly and to not parrot is paramount to your success. So I hope that helps. Lots of love to you guys. For those of you who need healing, feel free to reach out to me on my website, christianrlong.com. For some reason, I almost forgot the name of my own website. Um, much love to you as well, Joanna. Uh, very curious about jnana yoga. Yes, jnana yoga is taught in the higher levels of our Hatik yoga. So for those of you who know, Arhatic Yoga is the yoga system that Grandmaster Chol Koksui developed about 30 years ago, which is, a <clears throat> which is a synthesis of the major branches of yoga. 
It's a synthesis. So basically, how does one properly, rapidly, yet safely evolve and merge their little self with their higher self? That's our Hatha Yoga. How does one become a saint in a lifetime? And so you have to properly balance your spiritual development. So you can't be all loving but no intelligence. You can't be all intelligence but no no heart. You can't be no will and only intelligence, right? So you have to do, you have to balance your will aspect, your love aspect and your intelligence aspect in order to function properly in the world. <clears throat> and that's what our hatha yoga is. And we all come into our hatha yoga at different levels of development, different ninja powers, different strengths, different weaknesses. But as we practice the protocols over a prolonged period of time, we start to balance out our development. We start to see, aha, I'm not very good at this virtue. I thought I was, I'm not very good at this virtue. I'm gonna spend a little extra time here. Oh, I thought I was good here. I need to spend a little extra time here. Wow, I'm really good here. Maybe I can just back off a little bit from that area that I'm already a ninja in, right? So it depends on what your objectives are and what you want to accomplish with your spiritual life. So it's a great system, been practicing it regularly for 16 years, and I would encourage every single human being on this planet to, to practice our Hatha Yoga. <laughs> but something I learned many years ago, <laughs> many years ago, encouraging everybody to practice our Hatha Yoga is like running around and encouraging everyone to become an Olympian. Doesn't make sense, right? Why wouldn't you encourage everyone to become an Olympian? Because of the time commitment, because of how difficult it can be at times, because of many, many different factors, right? Practicing our Hatha Yoga is like climbing a mountain daily. So I have found out, right? So just like you wouldn't encourage people to be, everyone to become an Olympian, right? You, you don't encourage everyone to become an Hatha Yoga practitioner. At the same time, exercise is good for everybody, true or not true. So you would encourage everybody to exercise whether the person is 500 pounds or whether the person is 30 pounds underweight, you would encourage physical exercise, whether it's a child or whether it's an elderly person. But what level of exercise they do is gonna be relative to their situation and relative to their goals, right? I hope that makes sense. So love you guys very, very much. Join us in the Twin Hearts Meditation in the next 15 minutes. Um, I will be putting the link. It's no longer on Facebook. Hello, it's no longer on Facebook. So when I post this video in the next 30 seconds, right above this video is gonna be the link to join the Zoom meditation for the Quick Twin Hearts. And then I'll, it'll be the same link for the uh, extended lecture, breathing, exercise, Twin Hearts, and healing at 10 o'clock. So one at 8.30, one at 10 o'clock. One at 8.30, one at 10 o'clock, okay? Love you guys very, very much. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant. Wishing you a beautiful day a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.